thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, as Heinrich said perfectly, uh, I'm going to introduce my, uh, a subject that we work on, which is improving battery life of a mobile fleet. So first, a few words about me. I am Abdel Munayim Belgalem, as said again, perfectly Heinrich, but people tend to call me Abdu for some reason. Um, I am a technical consultant at Grispector, which is a sponsor for the, for the event. Thank you again for everything. Uh, there I'm a roadmap developer and an onboarding consultant, which happened to be the reason why I'm here today, because being an onboarding consultant allows me to have, um, to leave the use, use case and be able to talk about them. Green Spector is a tool and the company, uh, the, the, the company I work for and the tool we used to, to make this happen and help developer improve the battery life of their application. Um, this company is uh, on the software is 100% uh, percent eco design um, core competency, which means our main purpose is to reduce energy consumption of Android application and mobile device applications. The tool we used during uh, this uh, this use case I'm going to present to you is called the Power Test Cloud. It's basically the biggest tool in Green Spector, which is of a device farm that allows you to run your tests and uh, UI tests or into UI tests or uh, UX, te UX test and be able to to uh, to perform uh, energy consumption measurement during those tests simply using the Power Test Cloud. A quick outline of my presentation will be starting with the stakes of eco design. Everybody knows here how much is it, it is important for, uh, for an application to be eco-designed and at least uh, energy friendly on the mobile device. Um, and then I, I will talk of this in B2B and B2C uh, environments. Then I'll start, about, uh, start talking about the use case that, uh, that we worked on. And from there, I, I'll be able to give you some recommendations that we gave to the client ourselves. And I'll end with a short conclusion to be, uh, uh, to be sure that you understood everything that I said and to be sure that you can write it down. Uh, first of all, the stakes of eco design. Uh, the first category of application is the B2C, where eco design is really important for one thing, which is user satisfaction. User satisfaction comes with uh, an application that is perf uh, performance, uh, that has good performances, and that is battery friendly. If somebody uses your application and the smartphone starts notifying your application as over consuming energy and resources, even if it's for in foreground or background, this can mean, uh, this can mean that the user may uh, uninstall the application or at least put some bad reviews on the store, and this is definitely not something you want to happen uh, on, your, on your application. And there is another, uh, if your application re is really important for the user and you are lucky enough that he won't uninstall it or at least put bad reviews on the, uh, on the store, he will, uh, he can be able, he will be able to, uh, sorry, he, he, ha he will have user frustration and this is something that you really not uh, want to have uh, when building your application and you want to, to build a community on your application. In terms of B2B, it's exactly the same. User satisfaction is very important. But then again, there is one more point that is very important, which is productivity. In B2B, in B2B domain, your application will be used by workers on their work, on their work hours. So if you, ma if you make an application that is not battery friendly and consumes a lot of energy, your application performance will be uh, will be less important and therefore the smartphone battery life will be lesser than the workers hours. Typically this is what we are going to see. The application of the use case will be used for eight hours a day but if the application doesn't, uh, doesn't allow the smartphone to stay up and on for eight hours, this is a big problem for user productivity. Of course now we have solutions, hardware solutions which are battery and battery and battery. A bigger battery and uh, external batteries. We, can, we, we have a lot of solutions, but is it really the good solution when you know that it's heavier, it's bigger, it's less, uh, it's less, um, it makes the device less mobile, which is 
which was his first purpose all the way along. So um, today I will show you that maybe adding battery capacity and Adri adding an external battery is not the only solution that we have and probably not the best one. For this I will try uh, I will show you the use case that we worked on which is basically the SNCF Cosmo project. SNCF is the main railway uh, company in France. Uh, the application was for ticket inspectors in train. It was from going from Windows phone to Android phone. We arrived where they called us to start the project with them when they started to, when they, they decided to move from Windows phone to Android phone. So nothing was decided yet, but only Android platform. So we had to be there for them, uh, with, uh, first of all, with the device selection. They had a farm of device, they had a list of devices, five to be, to be precise, uh, and those five devices were exactly the same for them. So we had to, to try and see which one was already a, be a better choice for energy consumption. Then we, w we helped them in the application development, so they used GreenSpect or our tool into their developments, into their CI, and it helped them decide everything that they, that they every choice that they had to make in development uh, to be the more user and battery friendly. They had, uh, of course, an autonomy criteria because it's B2B, so the worker has to work eight hours a day, which means if your application makes it that your phone, the battery dies in three or four hours, this is not a thing you want to have because especially they are in trains, so it means that they all, they, they either have to have another phone in their pocket uh, to end the day or a battery, exter external battery which is heavier and not a solution. And of course, in the term of battery lifespan, this is very important because we're talking about 16,000 devices all through France. So it means that if the, ba if the application is not battery friendly and consumes a lot of energy, you will have to change your, your cell phone after two years. If it is, maybe you can keep your cell phones for five years. So changing six th uh, 16,000 sorry devices after two years or five years is not exactly the same price. So we started to build a case scenario, which was uh, simply how a worker used the application through the day. We simp uh, summarized it to uh, a certain number of, applic of uh, features, which was barcode scans, RFID scans. And, the, 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 and some uh, network data. We think that network data is really important because in trains, they are not only Wi-Fi or 4G or 3G, but sometimes they are in an in a, in a, in a area that is only 2G, and 2G is, can be and will be very consuming in a, in, a, in, a, in a cell phone. So this is very important that we check also the network data. And then the idle, which is uh, again, really important. We see that there is five hours of idle in the day, which is basically when the train controller is speaking to a client, or again when he is uh, the, the, launching the lunch time at, uh, at noon. So this is a time that we have to take into account. First thing was test automation, which is uh, basically the only solution we have to be able to repeat the test on each device. So we used for this UI automator which is a tool that is in Android SDK, you can look at. And GreenSpector API, uh, which is Android API that we integrated in those tests, basically two methods, start measure, stop measure, everything between those two calls will be measured and sent to our server to draw um, a graph like this one. And of course we tested on real devices that the SNCF railway, uh, railway um, uh, company sent us. Those devices were uh, five, as I said, a Bluebird, a Zebra, a Copernic, a Famoco, and a Samsung. Of course, when they sent us the device, they already choose a little bit which one were their, uh, their uh, preferences, but the, the, um, they still had to choose between the Bluebird, the Zebra, and the Copernic. Samsung and um, Famoco were eliminate, eliminated in terms of ergonomy. Um, then again, we tested the mobile network. As I said, in, in, uh, in trains, there is, there is not always 4G or Wi-Fi or 3G. A lot of the time it's 2G, and it's really important for them to know how much their application will cost in terms of energy during this trip and during this train, uh, train, uh, train trip. Um, 
what we did basically was not to measure a 400 barcode scan and everything that I showed you last slide, but a little bit less and take a sample of this and summarize it and then make a projection on a, on a daily usage. So only 20 seconds of idle instead of two or three hours was simply enough, repeated enough, enough times, it was, uh, it was all good to, to, to project on a daily usage. The measure methodology was simple. It was making a reference measure, which is the device being on, nothing happening. This is the measure that we will use to, to compare with the other measures because this is your impact. This is where your impact is going to be. The idle measure and the action measures are simply, uh, as I said, the idle measure was uh, idle on and idle screen off, and the action measure are the scans, uh, credit card payment, and everything that, um, that uh, a train controller can do. Okay, let's start with the, the first recommendation here, which was device challenging. Um, what we got when we started working was a Bluebird, and they say, and SNCF told us we have to choose between the Bluebird, which is X hour autonomy, like uh, I think 12 hour autonomy, and this Zebra. And we're like, we're like, okay, but first let's try to see if it's really what the constructor says. Sometimes constructor says that there is 12 hours autonomy. In, in, in fact, there is a lot less. So for example, for the Bluebird, uh, what we did notice was in idle measure, uh, the CPU was always at 25% uh, minimum. So it means that on the four cores, one of them was all, always at 100 because it was using some GPS location settings. May maybe it was done on purpose by Bluebird, maybe it was a bug, we never knew because when we told them about it, they told us it was a bug, they sent us a new Bluebird and it was all corrected. So every time you, you want to use a device for a new fleet, be sure to check everything that the constructor says but because it's not always as they predict. Um, in France, we call this the Volkswagen effect. I don't know about this, I don't know about here, but be sure to check about everything that they say before using the, the cell phone for real. Second step, device selection. Once you, once you did uh, all the verification and the challenging that you could possibly think of, you have to choose between all the, all the cell phones that are left, which were Bluebird, Zebra, and Copernic. Simple step, you measure each step of your application, each feature of your application, and you, you project on a daily usage, and you, you, look, at, um, you, you look at which uh, cell phone is consuming the less. Simple enough. The next slide is my, my, uh, my preferred one, because this is a graph that I love. Simple graph, indeed. <laughs> or you can see all the lines here are different configurations as I told before. So one is with 2G, the other one with 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, and with different brightness, um, brightness configuration. And all, uh, we did this, this, these lines here are for the Bluebird battery. So the Bluebird uh, cell phone, sorry. And uh, our goal here is to uh, arrive at eight, eight hours. So to, be, to, to make it simple for you, every line that ends up under the zero line makes that the cell phone will have less than eight hour battery. And we'll see that all the three lines that are with 2G network, all the other ones are 3G, 4G, or Wi-Fi, all the two, three lines that has 2G network are under battery, uh, means that the cell phone will not last for eight hours. Obviously, um, this is not a thing that eliminates the, the Bluebird, but you have to, to be able to know that to know that every, everything, everything that can be uh, a, a configuration on the cell phone may affect your, uh, your, uh, your application uh, behave. Um, nevertheless, even if the Bluebird was not able to, to stay eight hours on with full 2G from the start from the beginning, which is rarely the case, of course, he, it has been the, the cell phone that has been selected by the SNCF because the other cell phones, even if it wasn't in 2G, some of, the, some of the configuration, which were normal configuration, weren't able to last uh, at least eight hours. First thing first, when we choose, when we choose the, um, the device and everything is set up, we have to choose if we want, if we want to use a MDM. And obviously, SNCF wasn't going to choose if they want to use, they told us we need one, because everybody does, so why wouldn't we use MDM? What we said was, maybe we, we should check again before 
before, uh, before using an MDM because MDM is not free. It's not energy free, it's not memory free. It's something that runs on the cell phone and drains the battery like all the other applications. There is no exception for it. So we started to measure without any MDM on the Bluebird and then we continued to, to measure with Mobile Iron and AirWatch for example here. We measured for other MDM of course. But what we can notice is that for uh, without any MDM is twice, uh, battery life is twice longer than with AirWatch. So maybe AirWatch is not the good call here. Maybe if you really want to use um, uh, MDM on a, on, a, on a cell phone, maybe you should check on your cell phone how does all the MDMs that you have in, uh, in a, uh, that, you, that you can choose, sorry, uh, how do they behave on your cell phone and then make the right call. If you really need the MDM, then maybe take the one who, which consumes the less. And, and try try to see if you really need one, of course. But because always without the MDM will be always the best choice in terms of energy consumption, of course. After that, they had um, so there is something always a question that we are asked uh, a lot when we are doing this kind of uh, experiences and uses cases, uh, which is framework selection. Using a framework like Cordova in this uh, in this example can be a lot of uh, time gain and uh, ti development time gain. So you, you will, uh, your development time will be less and less uh, if you will use a great, uh, great um, framework. And, but obviously, as I said, it has a cost. Using Cordova here, we see that the energy consumption, which is the two first lines, uh, platform discharge and platform discharge speed, are, uh, is uh, more consuming, of course. There is more energy consumption. But the big point is the memory, which we saw that is going from 41 megabytes to 80 megabytes, which is the double. So again, f Cordova will help you build your application faster. And of course, if you have um, a fleet that has Android and iOS and Windows Phone, you will have to build one code. But you have to know that this, is, this has a price, like everything else, energy, energy, uh, re uh, energy price, and of course, memory price. Of course, uh, there is other solutions that exist, like Crosswalk, which is a plugin or framework, sorry, for Cordova, which um, basically replaces the Google uh, view by a we another web view, which is less consuming. And for example, if you have to choose a framework selection and you do not have time to make it native for every, every environment, Android and iOS and Windows Phone, you can try to choose uh, a plugin from your framework. So basically, Cordova Crosswalk was less consuming in terms of energy, but more consuming in terms of, term of memory. So you have to balance and say, okay, I, wanna, I, I, will, I, will, I will try to, to reduce the energy consumption, even if it gets me, it's used less, uh, more memory. So framework selection is important, and you have to know that it has a price like everything else. When the application is built, it's not over yet because you have to try to see um, which part of the application is consuming more. And of course, saying that the loading of the application is consuming more energy doesn't make it so simple because the loading of the application happens, what, once, twice a day, maybe three times a day if there is two blocks in the day. But the idle, f idle parts are the ones that are always in the running. The application can be running for eight hours straight and most of the time it will be in idle. So reducing the energy consumption of idle phases is really, really important and sometimes more important than the loading if you have an application that you know that will be loaded once a day or twice a day. Don't take too much time. Don't use too, too much of your development time to work on the loading and try to work on the phase that really matters and, and uh, which, is, which can be the idle. Last but not least uh, recommendation, the network control. As I was saying earlier, uh, cell phones tend to use a lot of battery in bad network conditions, like 2G or bad Wi-Fi, bad Wi-Fi, bad 2, 3G, bad 4G too. Um, and, and this is very important to know that you can, obviously you know it, you cannot um, choose when your user is going to use your application. You cannot say that you, you should use my application only with a Wi-Fi, only with a 4G or 3G. 
you should be able to, but you, sh you are able with the Android APIs to detect that you are in a poor network connection and to detect that you are not um, in, a, in a connection state that will allow you to send your data properly. So what you can do is put your request in a buffer and say like, okay, I'm in, now I'm in a bad position. I don't want to spend to send my data, so I will try to wait until I have a good network. To finish, um, summarize everything I just say. A very important thing is device selection. Do not trust everything that people say and constructs or especially uh, say about the devices. When you do the choice, when you have a, a, little, a lot of choices of mobile, choose carefully to, to not be able to, to, to not find yourself with the bad device and already before the first line of code being uh, already energy consuming. Software selection, which is framework selection, library selection, I don't speak about it, but it's very important. Sometimes using a library is faster, but is it really worth it in terms of energy consumption? And finally, the user context control, which was please be sure to, to check the network conditions before making any requests. Be, be sure that you, you, you're aware of the environment be, before doing something that needs that environment to, to work properly. Thank you for your attention. I'm a little bit late. Thank, Thank you. you.